Societies are constantly evolving. Buildings rise and fall, cultures adapt, and technologies transform our lives. But how does this change happen? What forces drive social progress? And why do some traditions seem to endure for centuries? Early sociologists tried to explain social change. Functionalism saw society as a well-oiled machine, with each part contributing to its smooth operation. Conflict theory focused on competing social classes while symbolic interactionism explored how symbols and meaning shape our lives. These theories offered valuable insights but they had limitations. For example, functionalism ignored the potential for conflict and change. Conflict theory often painted a picture of constant struggle while symbolic interactionism didn't fully address how large-scale structures influence our daily interactions. Margaret Archer, a prominent critical realist sociologist, saw the need for a more nuanced approach. She believed existing theorists missed a crucial aspect, which is the interplay between social structures and human agency. Archer drew on critical realism. This perspective argues that there's a reality beyond our immediate perceptions. Social structures, the rules, institutions, and norms are part of this deeper reality. These structures provide the framework for our lives. They shape our opportunities and limitations. Imagine a beehive where the bees have a certain level of agency, but the overall structure of the hive guides their behavior. But humans are not simply parts like gears in a machine. We have agency, which is the ability to make choices within the social structures that surround us. We can choose which doors to take along our way. To understand how societies change, we first need to grasp two key concepts, structure and agency. Think of structures as the framework of a building. They set the boundaries, while agency is our ability to act within that framework, like what couch to place in your room. For example, a school is a structure with schedules and rules, but within that structure, a student has agency. They can choose whether to focus on academics or extracurricular activities. Sociologist Anthony Giddens believes structure and agency are inseparable. Our actions are shaped by existing structures, but simultaneously, those actions can reinforce or change those same structures over time. It's a continuous cycle. Margaret Archer took a different approach. She believed structures exist first with their own unique properties. Then, we interact with them. Over time, our actions can either cause transformation, which she called morphogenesis, or they may simply reinforce the existing structure, a process known as morphostasis. Oversimplifying how structure and agency relate can leave us feeling stuck. If everything changes second by second, where do we even start when we want to change? Archer's theory gives us a more nuanced way to understand this. Margaret Archer's morphogenetic approach provides a powerful tool for understanding why change happens or doesn't. She argued that social change unfolds over time in distinct phases. First, we need to grasp the existing social structures. These are the rules, institutions, and cultural norms that sets the stage. These structures shape what is possible, both enabling and limiting our choices. Then people interact within those structures. There are conflicts of interest, Ideas clash, new technologies, and knowledge emerge. This is where the seeds of change are planted. 
Over time, these interactions can lead to a transformation of the existing structures. This is morphogenesis. Significant social changes happen, but it's not guaranteed. Sometimes, actions might simply reinforce the existing system. This is morphostasis, where things stay mostly the same. Archer stressed that both change and stability are possible outcomes. Let's look at the rise of streaming services as an example. In the past, cable companies dominated the market. This created dissatisfaction later on. Then, tech companies leveraged the internet creating alternatives. Ultimately, this transformed the wool industry. That's morphogenesis. However, some cable companies may have clung to old models, leading to morphostasis for them. Morphogenesis and morphostasis have application in various fields. These concepts can help us understand how organizations function, how social movements form, and how individual actions contribute to the world around us. Archer's emphasis on the interplay between structure and agency help us see that we are not merely passive products of our environment. We play a role in shaping the future. Margaret Archer's work leaves us with a crucial question. What kind of society do we want to create? Understanding morphogenesis and morphostasis can empower us to be conscious agents of the changes we wish to see.